And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, last year I reviewed a small game called War of Endines, which was a game that I really enjoyed. Really enjoyed it. Made it to my top 100. And I then, as I, I had a chance to do a paid preview for Devastation of Endines, which I was glad to do because I knew how much I liked this. And this was the sequel. Although, if you can see, there's a slight differential in size here. Now, there is a lot going on here. Um, I, I cannot fit it all in one review, but let me see what I can do. Let's go. There is so much to talk about in this game, I cannot fit it into one video or even remotely into one video. But what I can do is show you a little bit of how the main game works and then I'll talk a little bit about what's in the box. There are 30 very different characters in this game. Each of these characters is uh, compatible with the characters from the original game, War of Endines, Battlecon. Uh, but each of these 30 characters, they will come with a stand and they will be fighting this is the regular battle that you would fight between two characters. And this is a small part of what's in the game now, but for me it's the main part of the game. Each character is going to take a handful of cards. Shot, Burst, Grasp, Dash, Strike, and Drive. Uh, those are basic attacks that all characters get. Then let's say in this instance I'm taking King Alexian 37, and so I'll take his card and his special ability, which gives him three chivalry chips, one of them which goes to his opponent at the beginning. I also take his token and I'll place it on one of the starting spots. My opponent is going to be Karen and Jagger. So she comes and she actually has a werewolf token that starts on the board with her. And then each of them gets a bunch of styles, like him here. He has Gestalt, Stalwart, Regal, Mighty, and Steel. And then he has a specific attack for him, which is Divider. While Karen, her special attack is Claw, that she'll be adding. And then she has Coordinated, Feral, Full Moon, Duel, and Howling. Those are her special attacks. Each character comes with a reference card that you can give to your opponent so they can remember what all your attacks are. At the beginning of the game, each character is going to take two of their uh, cards and make pairs of them and put them essentially out of the game, okay? They're not going to be able to start the game with each of these pairs of cards. So these are our Karen's cards over here that she has taken out, and the King's cards are over here, and he'll take out two pairs also. Now. Each player then is going to look at their handful of cards and they are going to make a pair of cards with them. For example, the king here could put the stalwart and drive together and make stalwart drive. Or he might decide to do mighty strike. Or he might decide to do steeled strike. So he has different ones that he's going to do, but instead he decides secretly he's going to do a steel drive. And Karen is going to randomly pick cards so that we can see what happens randomly. So each character is going to pick a pair of cards, a blue and a red card, which is a style and a type. And this is what you would do most rounds of the game. Now, during the rounds of the game, you're going to be keeping track of the rounds with a round counter, and you'll also be keeping track of these life point counters that keep track of how much life each character has, and which incidentally work really good for Magic the Gathering. The two pairs are revealed, and the first thing we look at on each pair is the priority. The priority here is negative one plus four, so his priority is three. Her priority is zero and one, so it's one. So if any of these said, when revealed, something then would happen. And then there might be a start of beat. So here it says on this card, burst start of beat, retreat one or two spaces. She must retreat one or two spaces on the board. So she can only retreat one. 
So she retreats one space on the board. The, the king then goes first, and it says, now, before activating, advance one or two spaces. So he decides that he's going to go forward two spaces because he's going to try to pin her into the corner. And then it also says, before activating, advance up to one space for each point of damage you soak during this beat. Well, he didn't take any damage. So now we look at the king's card, and we look at his range, which is one and five power. That's how much damage he would do to the opponent. Unfortunately, she is three away from him, so he does no damage to her. She then has a chance to hit back. We look at her range. Her range, zero and then two to three, so she has a two to three range. She's within range of hitting him. Of course, he would not have moved in, probably. But she hits him and says, before activating, she can move Jagger to any unoccupied space. An opponent who was in the same space as Jagger moves with him. So she can move her pet werewolf anywhere she wants. So this time, she'll probably move the werewolf behind him. If it had been in the same spot as the king, she could have moved it with the king. She will now deal the king three damage. The king might have a soak ability, which he could soak up the damage, but otherwise he just takes three damage. Now that's a very basic rundown of what one round of the game is. What you do then is you'll take your pair of cards and you'll put them here and slide these other two pairs over. So whenever you play a pair of cards, you won't be able to use those two cards for two rounds. Then the other two cards come back in your hand. You'll take those cards and use them again in the future. So that's essentially a round will continue until either 15 rounds have gone by. And after 15 rounds, whoever's taken the most damage is the loser. The other person wins. Or if you knock someone down below zero health, then you have won. Now, there's all sorts of other things that can be in this game. There's moving and reversing spots. You know, you can move and jump behind somebody. Each person has special abilities. There's what we call stun. When you hit somebody in this game, if you, whoever hits first, the other person cannot hit back unless they have what is stun guard, which means, let's say someone has stun guard four and they take three damage. That hasn't gone over their stun guard, so they still have a chance to hit back. But hitting first is a big deal in this game, and knowing when to hit and use your special abilities is pretty critical. As I said, there's 30 different characters, and all these characters have special abilities. One person can drop wormholes around the board. Another person collects gold tokens, which they use to bring mercenaries into play. Another person can use zombies. Another person has different artifacts that they can use. Another person can change their priority, but lose life by doing that. Um, other characters are just straight up fighters. Some of them are good at range. Some of them are good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Some of them have droids that they can use. Uh, like I mentioned, this one girl's a werewolf where she can manipulate that werewolf. King uh, Alexian is so strong that he actually has a disadvantage where his opponents can ante these chivalry chips he gives him to give him plus one power and plus one priority. And there's just, I, it would take me a long time to go over all the different abilities of these different characters, but the game at least has them sorted out. The ones in Novice Flight are very simple to use, very easy to understand, all the way down to these guys. It was the first time you play with these, they're more difficult. There's a lot of things going on that you wouldn't know how to use with them. Characters also have, you can use, there's so many options that you can add in this game. There's an option where you can add these special, like, super cards. Like this one is a power six, priority five, and you can use this card only when you're at seven health or below. And there's two sides each of these cards. Look at this one. It's a po power 10. But you have to be in the right spot. Karen and Jager have to be adjacent to the opponent on opposite sides. And if you pull this off, and you can only pull this off at the end of a round and basically make your uber mega attack. The game also comes with different arenas that you can fight in. And each of these arenas will have different things that happen. You want to fight in the Planestalkers headquarters, or you want to fight in a breach. These will have different effects on the duel. Really, just right now, look, all over this table, I have scattered all the different parts of this game. Uh, when I did the component drop for this game, I didn't really think about it, and it took me hours to sort it back out because there's so much. And putting this and BattleCon in the box was just a huge undertaking. The game comes with ways to sort it out, but there's a lot. And each, there are so many different ways to play. You can play multiplayer modes. You can, it shows you how to play with multiple people in the rulebook. It shows you how to play tournaments. There's ways to balance out the sides to let one person be more powerful than the rest. 
And then there's scenarios. <clears throat> In a scenario, there's single player co-op modes where you basically go into a crypt, think of Double Dragon, and you move in and you have to fight these zombies and imps and different things. Uh, you can do it by yourself, you can do it with a group, you can do it where you can fight against these mega giant boss monsters. I mean, look how big these guys are. Each that come with just a deck of cards and are really hard to beat. And the box is just full of all these different things that you can use. And I don't even play with half this stuff. Most of the time when I play, I just want to play a quick two-player game on the board here. One character against another character. And with 30 different characters, plus the 15 or so that came in the first one, that's so many different combinations. And learning how to use just one of these guys properly is going to take you a long time. There's so much to say here, really. First of all... Really follow the instructions. When you open up the, the, the game, it has instructions in there. Open this pack first, play with this, then open this pack and play with this. Do that, do that, do that, or you'll be overwhelmed. I know how to play the game. And I was overwhelmed with just how much was in the game. This might be an example almost of there being too much in a game. I know, I know, I know. How can you possibly say there's too much in a game? There is a lot in this game, but I mean, come on. You are getting your money's worth a million times over. First of all, let me be clear on this. Devastation of Indines is one of the best games I have ever played, ever. It is a fantastic game. It takes the idea of two players fighting in a Street Fighter style or whatever your modern uh, fighting games are, takes that and puts that into a board game. The characters are so unique and so different and you'll, I mean, it's more than just a paper rock scissors thing. I mean, essentially that's what the game comes down to, but mixing those pairs up is so much fun. I mean, I, I, have, I don't think I've even seen all 30 of the new characters in action. I might have, but I'm not sure. Some of the characters I've played with many times the same character because I want to see how they, I want to learn how to play them and get better at them. And there's this constant, I mean, it's definitely a game that once you understand will do better. Like I said, there's a ton of stuff in this game. Fighting bosses, going on those things, and that's cool and neat, but I am just so content with the two player fighting game. Now don't get me wrong, I, I, I think the tag team thing is fun. I like taking two players, two characters up against another two characters and doing a tag team match and having them come in. I think that's a cool idea. And I like the super special abilities that everybody has. So there's some neat concepts in there, but wow, this game is amazing. I There are very few times that I'm just blown away with how much is inside a box of gaming. But in Devastation of Indines, I mean, I loved this game. But this game kind of pales besides Devastation. Now, fortunately, the characters and everything are interchangeable. Uh, the, the, uh, the stands for these guys are not as big as those. The tokens for these guys are smaller. But the cards are the same and everything else uh, matches. This game comes with a board. Uh, but the games themselves take maybe 20 minutes once you know what you're doing. And that's really fast. But I don't know that I've ever played this game very rarely have just said and played it and then played one match and we were done. It was constantly, let's play another match, let's play another match, let's switch characters, let's try another match. And I really enjoy that feature. I will gladly play any of the characters in this game because I like to switch around and feel, oh, I need to be, you know, dancing around my werewolf and where's my werewolf or I'm fighting the character from this one who was a panda. Let's see if the panda can beat the werewolf or uh, I have the guy with clones. Uh, which, which one is the real person that you're trying to hit? Or this person who's just really good at backing up and shooting the snot out of the other person. There is so much entertainment I get out of this. I think the artwork is cool. I think that the game itself, let's be, let's be fair on this now, the game itself isn't the easiest to grasp right away. The big rule book has it taught in like a comic book style, which is okay. And I think for some people that will help out a lot. I, I, I always skip the comic book when I'm looking for the rules and go through. But things are very clear. You have these beats. So first you do the start of beat. Then you see who goes first. And then that person, whoever goes first, does their at on activation. And they do that. And then they fight. And then you see if the other person's stunned. And if they're not stunned, then they get to do their on activation. Then you do the end of beat stuff. And that seems complicated, but it's not very hard. Unfortunately, they put on the board in exact order of how things go. And once you play, it's very second nature. Oh, you played that. Oh, you did this. There's an attack where you can basically... <clears throat> 
you know, slide under the other person or avoid their attack completely, but you don't do any damage. And so you got to figure out when your opponent's going to do that. So you play one of your weak attacks at that point and get in a better position so next turn you can pile drive them. If someone's good at close attacks, how do you stay out of their way the whole time and manage to hit them? And if you are good with those melee attacks, how do you stay in close and keep the other person from dancing around? Knowing how to utilize your thing. I'm, I don't know that all the characters are perfectly balanced. I haven't noticed one that's better than the other. I will say that I noticed that there's some characters are much more difficult to use and play than others. But wow, wow, folks, you gotta try this. It is an amazing game. It is an amazing experience. It is one that will be on my shelves probably the rest of my life. I think it is fantastic. Certainly give it a try. Devastation of Indines. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boop. Boop.